Well, it's not dirt, it's crumbs and nasty stuff. Let me just tidy up for my friends. Better than nothing. I also have a banana here, mom life. And then I have this, which, oh my gosh. Whatever paint they use in pre-K, kindergarten, that kind of thing, it all smells the same. It literally smells like my kindergarten classroom. <laughs> Bringing me back. Hello, party people. Today I have a list of things to meal prep with you. I'm excited to get started because I like to eat. You know what I've been eating recently? The brownies. Almost all of them. No regrets. They are so good. I made them with you in my last vlog. Ina Garden is a magician. They were really expensive to make, but worth it. Okay, what are we making today? I have some box muffin mix we're gonna whip together. That seems to be an easy breakfast for my kiddos. Some energy balls I did not get to last meal prep, so I feel like I should do that this time. Share my famous energy ball recipe with you. <gasps> Anniversary banana bread, you guys! Can you even believe it's been an entire year since everyone and their mom were in their kitchen making up banana bread. So we're, I thought it would be a nice time to just whip some up again. Why not? Pad Thai? Story behind that but I'll share it with you as we make it I have some fruit to cut up pineapple watermelon grapes berries that kind of thing I want to get some eggs maybe boiled or make some breakfast bowls oh, you guys breakfast and lunch are the meals that I skip 95% of my life and then I end up just eating junk brownies I had brownies for breakfast there's something wrong with me. Uh, and then finally, spaghetti sauce. I'm gonna throw some spaghetti sauce maybe in my Instant Pot or Crock Pot or something like that because, well, there's a story behind that as well, but I'll share it when we get there. First, what are we making first? <gasps> oh no, it's dirty. Oh well, that's my life. That's life. Papers are supposed to be dirty, right? What is this? Good as new, right? All right, let's get cracking on this pad thai. Whoa! Alex and I went on a date night the other day and we went to this new Thai restaurant. Drooling. It was delicious. I guess I really love Thai food. I just love food in general. So I thought, I want to eat it. So I looked up a recipe online. Okay, you <laughs> know what? I went on Pinterest and I looked up a few recipes because that's what I do. I just eyeball a few of them, pick out my favorite things of each one and make my own thing happen. And then I went to YouTube and I thought, you know what? There must be some simple recipe on YouTube. Wow, was I wrong. Everything was like super simple and authentic. And I thought, great, give me that. So this one recipe I started writing down and I wrote down literally have zero of these ingredients. <laughs> Tamarind pulp palm sugar, black soy, dried shrimp, zakai. What? What is that? So then I went back to Pinterest and jotted down my favorites and then I went to the store and you know what? They sell pad thai sauce in a little jar like this for six bucks. I thought, what a steal. Did I buy it? Did I buy it? Nope, I didn't buy it. I thought, why spend six dollars? <laughs> Why spend $6 on a jar of sauce when I can spend $25 on all the ingredients to make the sauce from scratch? So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, hopefully I have everything we need. Oh no! Okay, good, false alarm. I thought I broke something. Oh, I did. Oh man! Man, I kept this out. That's what happens. Where are the pieces? Man, where are the pieces? My heart is breaking. I left this on my counter be- Ooh! <gasps> It still functions. Good news all around. It's my little garlic grater and I left it on my counter because I use it all every day. I can't believe it's broken. All right, what do I need? Did I say what we were making first? Pad Thai, drooling. You know, I need more space or less things. I don't even know what I'm looking for. Garlic. I don't need any curry powder. Are we sure about that? This doesn't seem right. I'm gonna go Double check the recipe. I just double checked. I, you know what? I'm gonna add the things that I feel like should be in it, which is uh, some chili paste. Anything else? So here's what I have and what I'm going to use. You need some peanuts. Gives it a little texture and a little crunch. Fish sauce, ginger, red chili paste, sesame oil, rice vinegar, mung bean sprouts. I found these at Sprouts. They're definitely not at my local grocery store. Happy to find them there. Brown sugar, matchstick carrots, a bell pepper, and then some rice noodles. First thing I'm going to do is soak my noodles in some hot water. And I'm kind of excited because I rarely get to use this thing. Oh, I forgot you need some cilantro too. Star of the dish, oh my gosh. I could eat this straight off the plant, it is delicious. 
It's a bit much. Why didn't you tell me it was overflowing? <laughs> you also need some chicken. My chicken is thawing out in the sink. I totally forgot about that. So while we wait on making this, let's whip up the banana bread. I'm sure everyone and their mom has given you their banana bread recipe, but I'm about to give you mine. It's gonna blow your stinking socks off. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm ill prepared as I didn't think I would be doing this so soon. I got everything that I think I'm going to need from the garage. Brown sugar to fill that guy up. Walnuts for the banana bread, that's how I like it. Butter, limes for the pad thai. I need a bowl for the noodles. Oh, okay, we have to soak these for 20 to 30 minutes anyway, which will allow time for our chicken to thaw. Ooh. That's weird. Maybe I should put these in like a cup. Pitcher? I don't have a pitcher. You're supposed to use hot tap water. You know how I don't like to follow the directions. There we go, soak it up. Great, well half of them are out of the way. This is not gonna work, what am I gonna do? You want a solution? I'm gonna take the noodles out of this. There we go, much better option here. Oh gosh, hot, cool, cool, cool. Ah! I got those chef hands so it's like no big deal. Okay, where were we? Nowhere, we haven't even begun. We've only just begun. For the banana bread, you need one stick of softened butter, but you know my brother makes it with two sticks of softened butter and it tastes twice as good. So that's what we're gonna do. Plus quarantine calories don't count. Two sticks of butter, straight in there. Oh, I should have used my rats. What's done is done. I should have used my KitchenAid, my life. Three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. I'll just use the rest in here. You whip this up. Whip it good. I am regretting my decision to do this by hand. I gotta get my workout in somehow, I guess. Oh my goodness, I need muscles. I'm gonna use my whippiest whisk. See if this does the trick. Oh my gosh, you guys, the handle fell off. How am I supposed to work in an environment like this? Where did I buy this? Home goods, piece of crap. That's enough. Two eggs, double-handed, because that's how we do it. And you add a third cup of Greek yogurt. I never measure, and what I normally do, this is probably more like half a cup, maybe more. What I normally do is grab one of those individual servings of yogurts, because that's what I normally have, and that works just fine. If you have sour cream, you can use that, I'm sure. You work with what you got. Oh my gosh, you need bananas. <laughs> That was an oversight. None of my bananas are ripe, but I bet you I have about 73 in my freezer. BRB. I have this container of bananas. They look sad. I'm going to put four of them in the microwave. My bananas are good to go. Don't these look great? I mean, somebody. Call the Food Network. This can be the thumbnail photo. Slide them right in. Give them the old one-two moosh. Oh my God! It got in my eye. Too much schmoosh. Well, just give them the old one schmoosh. Two is too much. You add a little bit of vanilla extract. Don't measure it, just a little bit. Give that a mix. Here comes the good stuff. Two cups of flour. And what I used to do when I was super healthy is I would mix whole wheat flour and oat flour, almond flour, all kinds of different combinations, okay? It's very versatile. One teaspoon of baking soda. Ideally, you wanna sift that through, but nothing I do is ideal. Oh boy, also we're done with the whisk. You can also add a little bit of cinnamon if that's your thing. I don't want to add any, so I'm not going to. But I'll tell you what I am going to add. These nuts. Just about half a cup, couple handfuls, that's good. Maybe a little more, a little more, and some for the chef. Mmm, then, Mmm, I got a licking of batter that was on my face. <laughs> Delicious. Grab a fancy bread pan. Fancy. Beginning of quarantine. I did not have fancy bread pans. Look how much I've grown. That's called progression. I mean, look how pretty this is. You gotta get in on this action. And then you just dump the mixture into the pan. 350 for 30 minutes. And then you cover it with foil and cook it for another 30 minutes. What I normally do, because my, I never had like real bread pans before, I always separated it into two different loaves, and you can totally do that too. I actually have a set of four loaf pans. Maybe I should have quadrupled the recipe. What's done is done, into the oven. Here's the recipe if you wanna screenshot that. So let's move backwards to the Penang. We're not making Penang. 
<laughs> well, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let me get a bowl. Okay, so let's just throw the sauce together, right? Wrong. What should I do? What should I do? Let's take it to the stove top. I feel like I can mix the sauce together while I just throw it straight into the pan. So I'm just gonna cut up my bell pepper. Really the only prep that I have to do for this, the bell pepper and the chicken. I feel like this would be a fantastic, easy, quick weeknight meal. But I also know that I don't think my kids are going to enjoy this very much. So that's why I decided to meal prep it for like a lunch for Alex and I. stovetop. I'm just gonna throw some oil in this pan. Oh no, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on, take two. I'm gonna throw some fancy schmance sesame oil in here if I can get it open. Oh, it's my first time using it. Fancy schmance. Oh wow, that, mm, that's something. I don't know if that will complement the dish, but that's what we're using. I cut up some chicken. You can certainly use any protein that you wish or leave the protein out and add more vegetables. That's what I would do if I was just cooking for myself, if I'm being honest. I'm gonna spread the chicken out so it gets a nice color on it. And of course, I'm using chicken thighs because that is my chicken of choice. Chicken's been cooking. I'm just gonna throw in my vegetables. I went ahead and cut up an onion because I really like onions. And then I have some shredded carrots I'm gonna throw in as well. A little bit of salt and pepper for those. I'm gonna use my broken garlic press thing. It's not a garlic press. I'm throwing two cloves of garlic on there and just smush it. Oh man, I overstuffed it. Ow! Smush it again. And we have some nice garlic. We're gonna throw that in. And I think we throw the noodles in at this point. This is a lot of nude. Okay, let's get saucy. A quarter cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of rice vinegar, a one and a two. Oh my gosh, I don't know my own strength. I just broke the ring that I need to peel this thing out of here. Oh, what's a gal to do? This is unbelievable. I just used my teeth. My dentist is like cringing right now. I can't get it open. Stupid fish sauce. I don't even want the fish sauce. Well, I just poked holes in it with a knife. How much of this crap do I need? One tablespoon. That should be good enough. And the recipe doesn't call for ginger, but I'm gonna add some in because it's my kitchen and I do what I want. Just a little bit. A little goes a long way. Same with this roasted red chili paste. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna be a lot. But at the same time, not enough. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this in here. And this, I think, is what adds the heat. This can't be the sauce, you guys. There needs to be more soy sauce. There's no soy sauce in this. I know that I'm missing tamarind paste. It's gotta be a key ingredient. Let me get some soy sauce. I use cocoa aminos. Oh gosh, I'm just gonna dump some of that in. That's looking a little better. Oh wait, some mung beans. Throw those in here. Oh yeah, that makes it look real good. I'm just gonna throw them all in. What am I gonna do with the rest? Cool, cool, cool. You could get out your food processor for this, but I'm just taking a dirty measuring cup, a Ziploc bag full of peanuts. I just took a couple handfuls and I'm just gonna teach him a lesson. Well, that's quite enough. Now you just add those in. And I think that's it, other than the cilantro, but I'm just gonna add that as we eat it. Let me take a taste test for the chef. Restaurant quality. <laughs> My doorbell. Someone's always coming over. BRB. Yay! I just got my Shutterfly package and another package. I don't know what it is yet. Maybe it's my swimsuits. Anyway, this is banging. Mm, it's so good. So simple. No skill involved at all. I need more veggies. Mm, mm -hmm. I think I can use this whole jar. There's like zero heat happening. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more and mix that in. I'm gonna let this cool and then I'll portion it out into some containers. Wait a minute, I forgot to add the lime juice. I actually cut up the lime, so I was just gonna place those in the meal prep containers. Maybe I'll just do that. I love how citrus just brings out the best in everything. A true 30 minute meal because our banana jet bread just beeped at us. Oh my gosh, it looks incredible. Oh wow. I'm just gonna cover it with some aluminum foil. These peanuts, what a treat. What am I gonna do with the rest of them? I have to show this to you. How incredible does that look? Am I right? Wow. Covered it up, back in the oven. 30 more minutes. 
Man, I'll tell you what, this is some good stuff. Okay, moving on. I am gonna throw together some spaghetti sauce. Avelina has really been enjoying independently cooking lately and I'm just gonna throw it on saute, uh, which is great. So she can cook noodles, but we don't always have spaghetti sauce. So I thought, okay, let me make some and just have it on hand for those nights where, you know, we just need spaghetti sauce. It's always nice to have on hand. Plus, homemade tastes so good. I have one pound of ground beef and one pound of sausage. You can use any meat that you want. I used to use ground turkey for this. It's all just about preference. And now that I'm looking, I don't have a big enough pot for that. I might have to throw it on my stove top. Oh, God. why do I do this to myself? I love throwing it in the crock pot just to let it simmer all day long. Oh, I might have to uh, throw it on the crock on the Why do I do this to myself? You know what? I'm just gonna cook the meat and then throw everything else in a crock pot. And that'll be the end of it. Blech. So what are you gonna need? Anything you want. I have these two cans of potatoes. I get some really nice ones from Costco, but it doesn't matter. These go on sale at Publix all the time for like, I don't know, four cents each. Crushed tomatoes, pureed tomatoes. You can use whole tomatoes, whatever you want. I literally couldn't care less. You just need some big cans of any kind of tomatoes. Diced tomatoes, if you like it chunky. Oh wait, I need some onion. You guys, that paint smell is so strong. I smell it as soon as I walk in from the garage. I'm just gonna cut up one onion to cook with the meat. And you can add anything you want, any veggies. Spinach is an easy one to throw into tomato sauce because if you chop it really small, no one even notices that it's in there. It just kind of looks like an herb. Join the party. And fashionably late. I will be freezing this sauce too once it's cooked. You don't even have to cook it all the way through. Just make sure the meat is cooked through and mix everything else in there and you'll be good. I'm also gonna cut up a few cloves of garlic because fresh is always better than powder. Well, the secret to meal prep is to never stop moving and that's how you get the most done in the shortest amount of time. So while the meat is cooking, I am going to cut up this watermelon, maybe on a different board so it doesn't taste like garlic. I know it's not quite summer yet, but the Florida weather kind of feels like summer some days. So my kids have been requesting watermelon. Ha! I hate buying the ones that are pre-cut because they upcharge that like 700%. But I also feel like I always pick out bad watermelons. Oh, hold on, is it good? Does this one have seeds? I bought it from Sprout, so. Wait, I never know how to cut it. Two sides off, nice, and then round about. Let's do it this way this time. Ooh, it smells really good. Hold on, I need a taste of this. Must get a taste. Okay, this is starting to sound a little different, so I'm adding in garlic. I think I had like seven cloves. However much you want. Let that cook for a little bit, like it's in labor. You're sounding a little different. You know what? Maybe I did pick a good watermelon. I know all the tricks. I've read all the tips, but I still always seem to pick out cruddy ones. Except for when I'm at Publix, I feel like they just don't put bad ones out. Can you guys even believe this time last year, we were like virtual schooling. We had Wentworth going in the pool every single day. This is when my love for charcuterie boards came about because I was making them a million times a day because it was easier than making individual lunch for everyone. Man, what a time. This is the best way I've ever cut a watermelon. I'm just gonna cut it into chunks. Chunky monkey. All right, taste test, I didn't do that. Mmm, not quite as ripe, but it's only March, so what can you expect? Forget to hydrate, it purifies the soul. I'm gonna take the meat, dump it in the crock pot. All the meat is going into this ooh, massive crock pot. I don't drain the meat either, I just call it flavor. Okay, so what do we add to this? I add both cans of the crushed tomato and tomato puree, and then I fill both of them up with water. Get all that sauce out of the can. Dump those in. And don't forget, if you're gonna recycle, wash the stuff out. 
Then I almost forgot you need a can of tomato paste. I have a six ounce can. I don't know how big they sell the cans, but that's what I'm using because that's what I have. Get it all in there. Oh yeah. Maybe this will be what's for dinner tonight. I love homemade pasta sauce. Something so special about it. And then you need, I use Italian seasoning and I use a lot of it. <laughs> Nothing seasoned in here, you have to. Probably half of this jar, maybe more. Perfect, just coat the top of it like snow. My aunt uses red wine in this recipe and you can certainly do that as well. Makes it, it gives it like a nice, deep, rich flavor. That seems good. A Little bit of salt and pepper and I think we're done. Just let this sit on low for a few hours and you're good to go. All right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, hey, I'm trying to tidy up as I go, but I, it's not really working out. Well, we have one thing cut. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the breakfast bowl. So you need some potatoes, onion, you need a couple peppers. How about a green and a red? And you need a lot of eggs. Ow! I put the brown sugar down by my feet. I've kicked it like 10 times. I'm gonna break a toe. Have you ever broken a toe? It's like the worst pain imaginable. And there's nothing they can do about it. A pinky toe anyway. I'm just going to dice up the peppers and onion. The banana bread beeped, so let's check on it. Right in the middle here. Well, that's definitely not done, so back into the oven. Actually, you know what, the first thing I'm going to do is, what is the first thing I'm gonna do? I'm so prepared. Let's cut the potatoes. I'm gonna cut these into pretty small pieces because, oh, I'm making a breakfast scramble. Did I talk about that? I love making these, but the thing is, you have to cook everything, you know, separately, so it takes some time. And most of the time in the morning when I'm making breakfast, I make toast. Because I just don't feel like making anything for myself. Okay, I think that's quite enough. I'm just gonna throw these potatoes into a dish and cook them in my microwave for about five minutes, just until they're softened, and then we're gonna saute them. perfect presentation let's cook it up almost forgot the best part about this breakfast the bacon oh I just love how bacon smells I cut it up into small chunks that smoky scent oh man it reminds me of one of my cousin's houses not that she cooks bacon a lot but they have a lot of like I don't know wood I guess what does this smell like cedar I don't know it smells smoky and delicious I want my whole house to smell like this all the time. While the bacon is cooking, I am going to crack all of the eggs, and I think I'm just gonna crack all 18 of these because why not? Have you guys perfected your double crack? Makes things go twice as fast. I'm just gonna give these a whisk now. The more you whisk eggs and aerate them, the fluffier they're going to get. And you can also add in some heavy whipping cream or half and half or just milk if you want and that'll make them a little fluffier as well. I'm just gonna leave them like this because I don't have any of that stuff. Take two on the banana bread. Oh yeah, that's done. Is it done? I think it's good enough. Doesn't that look dreamy and creamy? Bacon is nice and crispy, so I'm just going to toss it in this bowl. I'm gonna try to leave all the grease in the pan so I can cook everything else. How can I do this? Perfect. Potatoes are done cooking in the microwave, so I'm just gonna crisp them up in the pan. And they have nothing on them, so I'm going to add salt and pepper. Shoot! Well, the potatoes are done way faster than I thought. I thought I would have time to cut this pineapple. I don't. It's burning! I feel like Wizard of Oz over here. I'm just gonna pour, dump the potatoes with the bacon and dump some water in that. Wizard of Oz. Look at all that, came right off. And now everything's fine. I'm going to add some oil to the pot and I'm gonna add my veggies to cook them. Get the oil nice and hot before you add the veggies. 
Oh gosh, they're gonna go everywhere. Season everything as you go. Okay, now we're gonna have time to cut the pineapple. I always love having fresh fruits and veggies like ready to eat for my kids because I have to tell you, I've had this stuff for a day. I had the watermelon for a day, all day yesterday. I heard, can I have watermelon? And I was like, I'll cut it tomorrow, I'll cut it tomorrow. But it's like the worst when your kids ask for something healthy and you're like, nah. I don't know why I just cut the bottom off. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, this pineapple smells delicious. And I have to tell you something about this. I use it way more than I thought I would. Because, you know, this isn't a new invention, but every time I ever saw someone using it, I was like, oh yeah, whatever. It makes coring a pineapple a breeze. I wish I could time myself. Let's do it now. Probably 30 seconds it takes me to chop the tops off, spin this thing around, and cut it into cubes. Whereas before, it would take me five minutes, which still isn't much. But what I always thought is, oh, all the pineapple you're wasting. I'm barely wasting any pineapple. You can see that rim. That's what I would cut off. All right, can you see this magic? This is where my heart gets happy. All of that, and it's done. Throw it into a container and eat it. And bonus, you can take the top of this, plant it in the ground. I'm pretty sure that's all you have to do. And in two years, I think that's how long it takes to grow pineapple, you'll have a pineapple that's probably this big. If it came from the USA, because I know if it comes from another country, they like blast it with radiation and then you can't like regrow it. Anyway, there's the pineapple. Let's check on the peppers. Ooh, are we gonna boil some eggs? I guess we can do that. This is already dirty. I'll just rinse it out. I do find that my kids never... What? No! You guys, what has happened to my lights? And my ring light has not been on this entire time. Oh no, it just went out. Oh no! Oh, my ring light is fine. All, I have one, two, three, four bulbs out. I guess I need to go to Lowe's. <laughs> All right, what was I saying? My family never intentionally asks for boiled eggs. I find that if I have boiled eggs, they always eat them. And I have a question for you. I have seen that little silicone mold that goes into your Instant Pot that you can use to put eggs on. Do you use it? Do you have it? Do you like it? Share with me, because I feel like, do I need it? No, I don't make boiled eggs enough. Can I fit 18 in here? Do I want 18 boiled eggs? Yeah. Oh, you know what else you can make with eggs? Egg salad sandwich, one of Alex's favorite meals. Let me give this a mix. I'm gonna add a cup of water to the Instant Pot. You know, don't ask me how to use this thing because I don't have a clue. I keep trying though. Cook your eggs for five minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna do four minutes. I'm not gonna listen to anyone else anymore. I'm gonna do my own thing, four minutes. High pressure. Let's do it. I'm dumping the veggies into this bowl because they're done. And the last step to our delicious breakfast is to finally cook these eggs. I'm using butter because it's delicious. You know what I've learned about cooking scrambled eggs? Low and slow is the way to go. Otherwise, I just end up burning my eggs trying to like cook them really fast. And it works. They cook in like five seconds, but sometimes if I leave it on for 10 seconds, then I'm eating like burnt eggs and no one wants that. Unless you do, and then, you know, you do what you want. It's your kitchen. I give these one last whisk. The smell of melting butter reminds me of my childhood, like weekend pancakes kind of moment, you know? So wonderful. Dump the eggs in. I have a mound of dishes, I'll say that right now. Salt and pepper, and then continually mix them. Trust me on this. Well, I have to wash a bowl, so do what I say, not what I do. All right, back to it. Everything's good. Well, I walked away again, and uh, still not burnt, but it's sticking. And right before your very eyes, we have scrambled eggs. Just add them to the veggies. You ever seen such a delicious breakfast bowl before? Ooh, a great addition. Oh my gosh, those potatoes. Oh, everything looks so stinking good. Okay, so a great addition would be jalapenos, which I have done in the past. I don't have any jalapenos. All those colors. Oh man, I'm, I'm excited for breakfast tomorrow. And to be honest, I'll probably eat some before dinner today. <laughs> wow, doesn't that just look great? All right. Let's move on. I'm gonna move on to the muffins. I have this Krusty's protein muffin mix 
13 grams of protein. They're chocolate chip muffins. I don't even want to tell you how much sugar is in here. We're going to pretend it's a semi-healthy breakfast option for my kiddos in the morning. And plus, it's super easy to make. I feel like I could also freeze these if I wanted to and just serve them on the weekend or something. Or just have them, you know, pop them out of the freezer when they want a muffin for breakfast. Or a snack. Three eggs per box. And you piece of crap. Half a cup of vegetable oil per box. I feel like you could sub half of this easily for applesauce. That's a great alternative. And then three quarters cup of water per box. And you guys know, normally I would sub out half a, or the water for milk. And I would probably add an egg. I don't know, do the same thing I do with my cake mixes, but I don't have any milk. I do have, I, we have rice milk and that just is too expensive to add to these brownies. So we're going the easy way today. Bonus on this, these were buy one get one free at Publix. So imagine how much money I'm saving on breakfast, you know? I have so many dishes to do. Oh, are you finally on? Give you a shot of me mixing, cause that's what I like to watch. People mix food. I could watch people make pancakes literally all day long. Oh, I love batter. Oh, but speaking of batter, I just had a taste of it. Oh, I'm delicious. oven 411 degrees for about 20 minutes. I recently got these really cute um, meal prep containers that I thought would be perfect for my breakfast bowls because that's what I was looking for. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna throw the scrambled eggs and stuff into these little guys. If I can peel them apart! Come on, Kim, everybody's watching. Another utensil to wash here. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm pretty sure you could freeze these as well. Cause you know, I see in the freezer aisle all the breakfast food options and anything in the frozen food aisle is stuff that you could make and throw in your freezer as well. And I will likely throw some in the freezer um, unless Alex agrees to eat one of these with me a day because eggs in the fridge only last um, up to three days. The eggs are venting and my mouth is watering. I cannot, I've been nibbling on this for a while. All the veggies all the eggs, all the bacon. Workout. Oh, I wasn't telling you my tips because my camera wasn't on. So something I used to do was drain the hot water that was in here and then shake the eggs all around and look, they're like peeling on their own. It's crazy. I'm gonna put that in the cold water. I just put normal tap cold water on them and then I'll drain this and look, Miracles do happen. Ooh, this egg's kind of opening up, but you get what I mean. Just kind of give them a shimmy shake <laughs> and then put them in the cold water and then they'll peel like a dream team, hopefully, you know? But I mean, it's basically off. If you can see this, it's you don't have to do any of the work. And that has nothing to do with the Instant Pot because, oh boy, don't I have an Instant Pot as well. throw the eggs in this container. I have to work fast. I feel like they peel better when they're warm. Ah oh, man, see? I shouldn't have put them in the cold water. Someone said if you keep them underwater while you peel, you'll have better luck as well. And look at that. You guys are amazing with all your tips. My battery's dying again. Too bad. You're just gonna have to hold on. Oh, this is great. Oh, some of these eggs are already peeled. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Like a stinking dream, you guys. Oh, let's see if the inside is cooked. We need a sacrificial egg to see if the inside is cooked, right? Oh, to perfection. Whenever I do five minutes in the Instant Pot, I always get a gray ring. So this is looking mighty fine. Love this. Mm, down the hack. I love boiled eggs, but whenever I buy them pre-boiled, they taste, I don't know, like rubber, so I'm glad that I prepped them today. I'm just taking the ice cubes out of here. I should probably wash them, huh? 
Oh well, those will be my egg cubes. From now on. Mm. I'm quite excited about everything that we got to. We did not get to the energy balls another day. I'm sorry. Or maybe I'll make them and then just edit it in. I don't know what I'm looking for ever. That is my life. Grapes. I'm just gonna wash up some grapes, throw them in the container. I think I might have some strawberries as well. No, I think my kids ate all of them last night. What am I looking for? It's hard to find something when you don't know what you're looking for. I'm just gonna use some Dr. Bronner's Castile soap to wash the grapes, not too much. And I still haven't found what I'm looking for. There's one grape, there it goes. Here we go, give it a little shaky shake. Most of the time I wash my fruit with just water and that seems to do the trick, but I will say it does last longer when you use some type of fruit soap. So that's what Dr. Bronner's is good for. Word. Look at these monstrosities. I'm gonna get them on a cooling rack. Ooh, gosh, they look good, they smell good. I mean, have you ever seen a muffin protrude like that? This is wild and crazy. Well, well, well wild and crazy kids. Those are some wild looking muffins, you guys. And I'm not talking about blueberries. Like what went on with this one? It kind of looks like a hedgehog or a turtle. I don't know, I like it. Threw the pad thai into some of these uh, meal prep containers that I had. And don't they just look fancy with that lime on them? Oh my gosh. Crack this open on your lunch break and you will be the envy of everyone in your office slash home. <laughs> Well, I am pretty impressed with everything that I was able to meal prep for the week to keep us on track. We've got some snacks, we've got some breakfast, we have some lunch. We have banana bread. And what am I missing? Oh, the tomato sauce. Big winner, big winner. I hope this gave you some inspiration, motivation to do some meal prepping and set yourself up for success. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day and I'll see you next time. Bye.